Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Reed, Juris Doctor, Small Business Development, IT and Marketing Guru from sunny Victoria, BC. Follow me for new podcasts on beginner investing in business as I survive, grow and prosper in a post-COVID Canada. Disclaimer, my podcast and YouTube content offer very generalized information that has been beneficial to me. Always do your homework and due diligence and make sure that any moves you make are in your own best interest. Nothing in my content is any kind of advice and continuing to listen constitutes acceptance of this disclaimer in its entirety. Today's podcast, reviewing YouTube and other media financial superstars and telling you how and why they're useful and what to watch out for with each. Number one, meet Kevin. Kevin Paffrath, former gubernatorial candidate for California, is a brilliant economist. His total portfolio is likely over $50 million. He's super smart. There is so much that can be learned from this young genius, but his weakness is emotional response and in some ways naivety. I've watched him find some things out the hard way, like how rigged the US electoral process is. And he is under fire, you know, right now for making all or nothing style moves in the stock market, which is generally frowned upon by most investors. That being said, uh, when I start my financial YouTube watching each and every evening, if there's a new Meet Kevin video, that's one of the first ones I will watch. Uh, his information is, is right on point. Number two, George from Cryptos Are Us. George is a longtime crypto hodler, and he's seen the valleys and the peaks. Watch him to learn about crypto, altcoins, L1s and L2s, DAOs and NFTs. Learn what crypto is being used for, what real life project they're being used for. The downside, uh, George is an unfailing optimist, and he is occasionally flat out wrong, for a certain amount of time anyways. For example, he once uh, lauded Litecoin as an altcoin that spikes up periodically. Well, he said that during one of those spikes, the big November 2021 spike, uh, to be exact, where there were all-time highs all around. Well, Litecoin is currently priced at about half that evaluation. Uh, since then, he basically says, to heck with Litecoin. And I sort of agree. Only now, as an unfortunate Litecoin holder. Lesson learned. Don't buy stocks or cryptos based solely on the recommendation of a YouTuber. I did also do some due diligence. Um, I researched Litecoin before buying. It's the so-called silver of the crypto world. It's, it's a fork from Bitcoin. And it basically checked out as being four times as abundant as Bitcoin, but still limited, so still a deflationary currency. And it's inherently capable of fast transactions. Um, so I can blame poor George, who's not poor, by the way, as much as I want, but the risk in current failure was mine and mine alone. I'm just simply hodling it. I haven't realized my loss yet, so perhaps one day to the moon, Litecoin. Number three, Coin Bureau. Guy from Coin Bureau is fantastic at breaking down cryptos and technical analysis and debunking world issues like Bitcoin mining emissions, which is not an issue, by the way. Check out his latest video on that um, to get the full breakdown. There's really not too many weaknesses with Guy from Coin Bureau, other than the videos are pretty long, and his patient explanations, his patient explanations, may be a bit slow for those with faster minds and/or Type A personalities. Number four, Brandon Beavis Investing. This Canadian investor has done pretty well. Uh, we don't always agree on what to buy in the stock world, but then again, we often do. 
He's heavily into dividends and ETFs, as am I, and he brings a truly Canadian perspective. He is coached by his dad and others who have a lot of experience. However, his downside, I think, would be his youth, and that happens a lot. He will encounter the unavoidable challenges of youth and has shown he will react by doing things like clearing out a TFSA to pay for a baby on the way. Granted, this may have been the right choice for him at the time, but I personally am forever wary of all-or-nothing type moves, uh, knee-jerk reactions. Otherwise, his simple explanations range from the different types of Canadian bank accounts to breakdowns of specific ETFs and stocks, and is definitely worth watching. Number five, opticalart.com. All spelled out in one word. So you can get these exact titles and their spelling in the podcast description. Uh, so opticalart.com, he has excellent technical analysis breakdowns, excellent technical analysis breakdowns with moderately reasonable accuracy. As with all chart breakdowns, they simply do not predict the future, hence the downside. There is a thought that maybe the past can give a slight indication of the future, and if so, isn't more knowledge better? Still, um, no matter how you feel about that, a lot can be learned from this very knowledgeable microeconomist. Number six, ARK Invest. Kathy Wood. I think in the long term that Kathy Wood is uh, generally right. She calls the market how the market should react. Basically, she carefully plans for government and central bank, same thing, intervention. Uh, that being said, her various funds, her ARK Invest funds, have done worse than the market as a whole last year. I am hopeful this will turn around, but not so hopeful that I have actual money in her funds right now. Um, maybe this will change, but before I'm willing to buy in, I need to see a culture in place that will foster and incubate the innovation that she is so fond of, that I'm also fond of, and I really hope that it takes root and can grow. Um, and the culture that would facilitate that may be brought to you by Bitcoin and crypto. And... If the international money moguls can't stop Bitcoin like they're trying to do, then we could see a ripe environment for an innovation boom for which Kathy Wood and ARK Invest are more than capable of guiding the rest of us as to the players in that space with the most potential. Um, regardless, you can learn a lot just from listening to this true economic genius speak. Kathy Wood, um, worth a listen. Number seven, Graham Stephen. Um, so Graham, his YouTube videos are among the best um, from a graphic perspective, from a well-thought-out, well-designed layout. He speaks so clearly. Um, he's just very precise. Everything is, is just great with his, his videos. He explains the financial news and issues through a very precise micro and macroeconomic lens, and he's downright good at it. He really is. The downside with Graham, I'd say, are the clickbait headlines. He'll say things like, oh, I've sold all my stocks. But really, he's just talking about how others are selling their stocks and how you should be calm with that. right? But hey, if it works, and for him, it does work, more power to him. Graham Stephan. Graham Stephan, Graham Stephan, either way, this uh, definitely worth watching. Now it's time for speed round. So I'm going to go through a few a uh, little more quickly and then some more very quickly. Remember, all of these are in the podcast description, so you don't have to attempt to write them down. Just go to the description and check it out. While you're there, check out my link for Wealth Simple. If you're a Canadian and you like commission-free investing in stocks, as well as being able to keep your crypto in a bank account, then uh, click on that link for the the value of two free stocks being put in your account when you sign up. Um, I recommend them. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do use them and I do recommend them. Speed round. Number one, parallel wealth. Canadian financial advice. These are amazing simplified breakdowns of Canadian financial strategies um, from a financial advisor. The downside, there may be a possible profit motivation, right? 
financial advisors want you to pay for financial advice. And so there's always going to be a bit of a lead in to get you to go in that direction. Number two, Aziz Finance, my friend Tamar from Toronto. Good guy, lots of good breakdowns and knowledge. Um, not going to put a downside because that's my friend. Number three, Crypto Kirby Trading, the Jim Cramer of the crypto YouTube verse. He's got flashy sound effects. He's got dramatic video icons. He's been way off sometimes in his predictions, but you can't discount his in-depth knowledge of technical analysis. There is lots to learn from Crypto Kirby, and he's very entertaining. Get that crypto. That's what he says. Number four, Financial Nirvana Mama, a Canadian stock investor, and I'm a big fan. Her game is on point. Her ability to analyze risk is absolutely solid. No downside with Financial Nirvana Mama. Number five, Invest Answers. So much great info packed in here. But I don't 100% like the way his tone of voice sounds. That's just my personal preference. He has this black diamond background that, to my perspective, is hideous. All that aside, when he speaks, I listen because he knows his stuff. Finally, I'm going to list um, some of the others that I am subscribed to and watch. And I think all of them are worth watching. I don't have time to do an in-depth breakdown, but at certain points I have and at some point I will. But here they are, and remember, they're in the podcast description. We have Crypto Banter, Crypto Capital Venture, Departures Capital, Dividend Bull, Dividend Growth Investor, Economics Explained, Elo Trades Crypto, Elon Musk Zone, Game of Trades, Griffin Melks, Kelvin Learns Investing, Kevin O'Leary. Let's talk money with Joseph Hogue CFA. Marco Whiteboard Finance. Mike Jones Investing. Phil Towns Rule Number One Investing. Precedence Private Wealth. Robert Breedlove. The Rich Dad Channel. The Stocks Channel. The Trading Channel. And Wealth Awesome. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Um, lots of research points for you to uh, follow. All these, uh, all these YouTubers and superstars that I've mentioned here are absolutely worth checking out. Um, best of luck in your investments. Do you have any Instagrams you would like to share with us before you go? Get the latest real-time updates from my Instagram at Canada Stock Market. At Canada Stock Market. Hi there. If you are interested in making a podcast of your own, let me tell you how I did it. I used a program called Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I am a certified digital marketing expert located in Victoria, BC, and I'm working with a fantastic graphic designer from Victoria, BC as well. Learn more at babydragoncanada.com or find us on Instagram at babydragoncanada.